Hey mama, are you the leader of a team and you feel like your team is not advancing how they should? I wanna share with you one way, one thing that you might be able to do to help serve them better by actually serving them less. And I'm gonna illustrate that for you with two personal stories about my kids. So I was laying in bed with my kids, trying to put them down and they fell asleep on me. That's great, right? They're like so sweet and so cuddly and it's so warm and it's so nice. They're three and five, so you know, they're just like, And I had two choices in that moment. It was a Friday night, and so my options were really, one, pick them up, put them in their bed, because I know when I put them in their bed, they're gonna have a better night's sleep, and I'm also gonna have a better night's sleep because the way their sleep cycles are, once they wake up, they're not waking up at the same time, then they're waking each other up, and they're waking me up, they're waking my husband up, it's like a whole thing, right? But option one is, yeah, pick them up, put them in their beds. Option two is to let's all just sleep there until they wake up and then go put them in their beds. Or maybe even we sleep the whole night together. I know option one is the best option because we all get a better night's sleep that way and we all feel better when we sleep. But option two, option two is so tempting because they're just so sweet. I also know that I really like cuddling with my kids. I did choose option one. And the reason that I chose option one and put them in their beds and listen, it took everything in me to make that happen, is because I know I'm their mom, right? And I am responsible for making sure that they have a good night's sleep. I'm responsible for making sure that they have good nutrition, that they know proper social cues, that they are striving to be kind human beings. I'm responsible for making those things happen even when it's uncomfortable. If I had not put them in their beds, then we probably all would have had a worse day the next day, and it would have been my fault. The other story that I wanna share with you, and I'm gonna come to a point, I promise, is about my kids cleaning up. So in this one, I probably wasn't as strong as I should have been. I was really excited about watching a movie with my kids a couple weekends ago, and in order to watch the movie, they had to clean up first. They were taking a really long time to clean up, and that started eating into the time to actually watch the movie. And listen, I was excited about watching this movie. And so what happened was I had two options. I could either one, help them clean up or two, let them keep dilly dallying and continuing to play and messing around and eat into movie time where either we don't get through the whole movie or we don't get to watch the movie at all. And I chose to help them clean up. I stepped in, I started cleaning up, got it done so we could watch the movie. I don't feel great about that choice reflecting on it. Why? Because they didn't have the opportunity to learn the consequences of their actions. If you dilly dally, then you don't get time for the great thing that happens at the end of the night, right? I removed the ability for them to learn and grow by doing that. I enabled them to continue to keep playing and mess around and not follow the rules actually, so that we could watch this movie. And so here's where transitions and kind of goes to work. You know, you're the mama, you're the leader of your team. You are responsible for ensuring that they have great outcomes. You are also responsible for ensuring that they have the opportunity to learn from their mistakes. And I know for me, it's a practice I really had to put into place because it's so easy to step in and over help, over support to pick up the toys for them when they really should be the ones picking up the toys, right? And that might look like finishing out an Excel sheet, updating equations that they kind of didn't do right. It might look like finishing out research. It might look like speaking on their behalf in a meeting. They start stuttering and you just pop in to finish that sentence or finish that thought for them. All of these things are more enabling than empowering. And as a leader, what you really need to be doing is empowering your team, not enabling them. And it's not the easiest thing, but it is what you need so that your team can level up, so that your team can advance. And it's a question of whether or not you, as the leader, can step out of the way and let them fail. Give them enough rope so that they can get so close to going over the edge, but you can always kind of pull them back, right? My question then to you is to really think about the interactions that you've been having with your team if they're not advancing like you want them to, and understand whether you're the problem right? Are you enabling them rather than empowering them? Another way that I think about this is I don't know if you've ever seen the show My 600 Pound Life, but that show is a masterclass in how to enable people. Because here's the thing, if you're 600 pounds and you are in bed and you can't get out, you didn't get there by yourself. Someone is continuing to bring you the food. Someone is continuing to over support and over service you to your own detriment, right? And as managers, that's not who we wanna be. We don't wanna be that person who's continuing to bring the food, who's continuing to over service, right? If you have someone on your team, an ambitious manager who really wants to be a director and they just seem to be stuck at that manager level, they might be being over serviced. You might be overstepping and over supporting them and not letting them take the steps they need to actually grow, not letting them go through the pain and the challenge that will allow them to level up to director or VP. And so the question is, again, really think about you as the leader, are you enabling or are you empowering your team? 
that's it. That's the thought that I have for you. I want to share with you. If you like this thought, if you want to think more like this, please check out my podcast, The Savvy Working Mom, where we have these conversations and more all about how to advance our careers, find more joy, get out of the work-life balance rut, be great leaders. Thanks for listening. Hey mama, if you like what you just heard, I'm now offering VIP days where we can work together to help you thrive in and out of the office. Come check it out on my website, The Savvy Working Mom.